Hey folks, and welcome to Drinking Alone with Friends, a podcast where three friends drink alone together. My name's Chris. What up? It's Tud. And I'm Obert. And Obert, I have to say that I'm sorry to hear the news. Uh, I, I didn't know it was as bad as as you, as it, it sounds awful, but I, 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 from the bottom of my heart, I do have to issue you uh, condolences. Uh, well, I always appreciate any condolences, but uh, maybe I'm a little confused as to what you're con- consoling me about oh he does todd he doesn't feel he doesn't feel like he should talk about it on the podcast but it's okay this oh. is a safe this is a safe space over you can talk about it yeah this is only between chris and i well yeah only between and, me and us. yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and our listening audience that's how podcasts work <laughs> <laughs> no um i i had heard i i heard that there was a big uh big law change in montana and um I, I feel like I needed to give my condolences. Do you, do you now know where I'm going? Uh, no, we can grow our own pot now. Is that the law you're talking about? N- no, 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 no. Uh, what? what uh, I guess I'm, I'm <laughs> lost here then. Well, I, I had heard that you guys had to get rid of your fridges and they were outlawed in your state. Our fridges? Yeah. Yeah. You just got to use... That's why you had to put your food outside in the cold. Oh, no, it's a hack. That's how you cool your food down so you're not working your fridge overtime. You guys don't uh, do this? No, I, 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 no. I, no I, I think, I think you, um, I think it's okay. You don't want to admit that Montana doesn't allow refrigerators anymore. No, but we, it's, we it's still okay. got fridges. I mean, we don't need them right now. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, if anything, I need a fridge to keep stuff from freezing. If I was to put it outside, <laughs> I've <laughs> never, I've never used this, this, this life hack of yours. Yeah, me neither. Yeah, it's like like I just made, you know, I was debating on making a handle. I don't think I will, but I made a Guinness beef stew tonight and uh, came out really good. Um, you know, even though it's not a handle, maybe I'll put the link in the show notes because uh, everyone should try it. But, um, you know, a big pot of stew, and, and this happens a lot. You're behind, peeking behind the curtain here. I'll make dinner. You know, we record a little earlier in Montana time zone, and then I'll leave it out on the cat. It'll be like I'll scarf it down while before we start recording. Then I'll leave it on the counter the whole time we're recording the podcast, and then I'm like, ah, I kind of left that out for too long. So today, I don't want to put my big pot of hot stew in the fridge. Put that outside, and it cools right off. It's like 13 out I, there. I, I still don't believe. I'd like you're, you're gonna have to show me a picture of your fridge that it still exists. And it's still functioning. I'll show you, I, I don't, I'll show you I don't on the believe. webcam right now. Here you go. See that? With all the stickers on it. That's my beer fridge. It's a very small fridge. It's my beer fridge. It's proof that they're not outlawed. Oh, okay. Well, not beer fridges. Beer fridges are untouchable. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Full-size full fridges. Though, well, that was what I thought the condolences were for, <laughs> were for the beer fridge, to be honest. Did it die? No. No. It's not oh, illegal okay. either. <laughs> <laughs> Alive and well. Running right oh, along. Good. Keep I thought we accidentally cold. stumbled into a into a secondary storyline. <laughs> I guess not. <laughs> uh, yeah, Chris and I found it hysterical when you I, said I got to wait. Like, hang on a second, I got to go put this outside. I was like, he did say outside, right? Okay, cool. Well, hey, look at that. If you want to save yourself uh, some extra extra dollars, I assume it helps with that. I, I don't know. Yeah. Well, uh, I always am worried about like burning out the like the the motor on my fridge if it just keeps running too much but is this uh, a common occurrence with you have you burnt out multiple no because i always put my food outside to cool it off so you know. i'm like one of those things i just i'm paranoid about putting hot food in the fridge i don't know why it's just that i just grew up you don't put hot food in the fridge you don't do it well you know t- you know Todd. you know how we we get new fridges every month like ober doesn't have to oh, do yeah. that yeah oh, this is he, month three for this fridge so it's working quite a while <laughs> <That's>, uh... <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I think we need to like hook you up with like a better brand of fridge if you're if you're having to buy a fridge every month. So, okay, here's another funny story about this because I do I do this a lot, especially this time of year. Um, last, I mean, it makes it makes sense. Like, yeah, why uh, not? Right? What do you do, what do you do in the summer? I just don't cook stews. <laughs> uh, yeah, stew stew's not really a summer a summer yeah. treat. I. In the summer, I cook eighty percent of my meals on the grill, you know. And that hashtag stuff. it's always stew season. 
that stuff cools off pretty quick. But uh, so last year I did this, you know, I use, I'm a big proponent of the Instant Pot for pressure cooking, slow cooking, whatever. Take my Instant Pot. It's I very good. Put it out on the deck, sealed up. Um, a couple hours later, I went and checked on it and popcorn had like chewed the lid trying to get at the food. So I had to get <laughs> no. a new vent for the, for the Instant Pot. But uh, they were pretty good. I called them up and they were like, yeah, that happens more often than you'd, than you'd suspect that we have to ship out new parts because dogs chew on the vents. Like, I thought it was all sealed up. It was safe, but uh, maybe not. So, but I learned my lesson. Popcorn's out on the deck right now in the snow, and my food is out of my front stoop. So it's safe from her. Hopefully, it's safe from any <laughs> neighborhood cats. What that, about like the random hobo? You know, random hobo wants some hot food. He can go for it. He can have some mashed potatoes. So, but then you wasted all that energy, to, or you saved all that energy for nothing. Because you could have had hot stew cooling in your fridge. That's right, but at least somebody got to. to at least somebody got to enjoy it. You know what? What if it's not a hobo though? What if it's just like a rich millionaire drives by and smells your Guinness stew? <laughs> I'd be very confused. <laughs> Let's go through confused. the people that over would mind or not mind eating his leftover stew. Elon Musk <laughs> and- is driving by. <laughs> <laughs> what about your asshole neighbor, the, like the lady who lives upstairs and like listens to your conversations? What oh, if you yeah. walked out there and she was standing outside your door with the bowl, eating it, and like listening to the podcast at the same time? I don't know I love my neighbor. It's the best. <laughs> the best neighbor I could hope for. Right. Yes. Hello, yeah. friendly neighbor that you can't hear me because Oprah has headphones on. Right. Um. <laughs> Uh, no, I can't help but feel attacked in this intro. Just, I mean, I, I think it's, it's best when, you know, back in the pre-COVID days when we would have a party, you'd be hanging out in the basement playing some beer pong. You just put it in the cellar way. You just put your beer outside or in the cellar. Well, yeah, and the it's beer. Like, I get that because us- usually there's too much beer to fit in a fridge. It's the same idea. I mean, I'm going to put it in the fridge eventually. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure your fridge can handle it? Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. I got plenty of room set aside for my stew. He uses his frozen stew to to help his fridge. I do. Oh, <laughs> oh okay, yeah. It's yeah, like, it helps like lower the temperature. It's an ice box. So <laughs> Yeah. Well, okay. Well, we're glad that you are still allowed to have a fridge. We were Yes. We were worried. <laughs> yeah, apparently. You know what? I'm listening <laughs> a little bit you... to get on to the thread there, but I'm on board now. <laughs> Listeners, if you are, if you do this, go over to Discord. I want to hear from you guys. I never met anybody else who did it, but I just assume it's because I'm a step ahead of everybody. So. Oh, yeah. you're on the Elon Musk level. <laughs> right. <laughs> go work for go work for Tesla and just shit. innovative <laughs> food cooling. <laughs> lack of technology. technology. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm very smart. Oh man. But well, as, as Chris says, all this talking is making him thirsty. <laughs> See, I wasn't doing it because you guys were like <laughs> saying how I do it all the time. I was like, nope. You thought it, though. This. You thought it. I did. I was like, okay, let's go. But like, all right, no, well, I can't. I, I can am, never. I can never do it anymore. I am thirsty, and I'm going right for it. Would you say it's beer thirty, Todd? Would you say that talking has made you thirsty? <laughs> <laughs> all this podcasting sure made me thirsty. Thirty, and I'm thirsty. I've been working like a dog all week long, so maybe something cold won't hurt me. Because it's beer 30, and it's time to party. Yeah, yeah baby. baby. This week, I brought something that um, hashtag mom of the pod uh, dropped off at my house. Um, the reason I wanted to go first is because it does have coffee in it, so um, hopefully I'm not up all night. It is a hard latte uh, by... Prima Barista at a Mystic, Connecticut, by way of St. Genevieve, M.O. is Missouri, right? Not Montana, correct. Okay, (laughs) Missouri, um, but it's bottled by Prima Barista Brands uh, from St. Genevieve, Missouri, for Prima Barista Brands in Mystic, Connecticut. So it is a 12.5% ABV hard latte, vanilla flavored. It's made with real coffee. Uh, It's vodka with cream liqueur, Natural flavors and caramel color. Interesting. Yeah, it looks very interesting. White on my screen. Not really caramel. It is not. It's it's basically like I don't think any of us drink our coffee with. Uh, it looks like all cream, milk. no coffee. Yeah, it, that's that's my I, that's my thought process. It looks like oops, somebody wanted oops, like this no much coffee. coffee. Yeah, all milk. 
Well, that's that's like what a what a latte is. It's like espresso with milk and stuff. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Oh, that See, makes I did a lot not of know sense. that. See, learn hashtag learning. <laughs> hashtag learn. Get you learn. Um, I'm a nose. It smells very boozy with some like notes of like I I, I think of like coffee ice cream. Okay, that's a good ice cream um, flavor. Mm. Yeah, let's. It's all. It's only 200 milliliters. Um, so let's dive on in. Okay. I don't know when I would want to drink this, to be honest. Is this a morning right? thing? Is this a nighttime thing? It's a before a stream thing. That's what it is. Okay. It's got to be like a morning drink. Like Who starts their morning is like, you know what I need? A latte with vodka. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever put Baileys in your coffee? I think it's kind of the same sure. thing. Sure. Well, skiing, I mean, it's it's a popular, you know, schnapps or, or whiskey, but... That's a in a hot beverage, right? Like I don't know why, because this is I don't know if you mentioned that it's iced, but uh, oh yeah, it's cold. Um, yeah. I should I should say that it came out of the fridge, um, so it's to drink it cold. Um, I could see it being like like if you're out camping, for example, in the summer, um, and you wake up, <laughs> you got your camping fridge, you know, <laughs> you got your camping fridge, uh, and you know you want something coffee ish, I guess, but you also want to start drinking it, you know, when you wake up. I don't know. Like, what type of summer activities do you do? Mountain biking, I guess? This is... Todd officially endorses this for all of your mountain biking. <laughs> I mean, morning tailgates, like Yukon tailgate games, there this would go. have been perfect for. Yeah. Uh, you know, but I guess you could also just buy a Dunkin' iced coffee and pour Baileys in it. But now you don't have to. Now you don't have to. <laughs> unless you want a different flavor other than vanilla. Because I don't know if they have other flavors. But overall, it's, it's very boozy. Um, you can definitely taste the vodka. The coffee and milk, or I'm going to call it milk with a splash of coffee, does not hide the vodka taste very well. Um, the coffee's good. I would say that this is a good coffee drink. It kind of tastes like one of those like Starbucks Frappuccino type of drinks that you buy in the glass at the grocery store. Yeah. It kind of tastes like that, and then somebody poured like a shot of um, a shot of vodka in it. I very mean, that cool. doesn't sound that doesn't sound terrible, but you know. Yeah, I, I don't, it's not the. It's not the worst thing in the world, but it's also not the best thing in the world. Like when I sip it, like my throat gets hot, like I've just taken like a shot of vodka. Like mm-hmm. that's that's how vodka y it is. Wow. Still. Would you say it's the mediumest thing in the world? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. It's it's meh. I would say that the perfect way to describe this is meh. I would drink it again. I have to drink it at least two more times. I think there's two bottles left in there. Um but I you know, I, I think I'd much rather make my own hard coffee if i was going to go that route or hard latte yeah if i was going to go that route overall right uh, well, uh, overall i'd probably give this a three five three two three two five three two five okay um yeah i know i had the pbr coffee thing sounds kind of similar except it tasted a little bit more like yoohoo and a little bit less like vodka milk but yeah i mean this this th- i mean the vanilla the, the coffee the vanilla the latte part of this Tastes excellent. I would like to actually have this sans booze because I think it would be really good. You might just like lattes. Um, Maybe oh, you oh, lattes. Snap. There you go. I don't think I've ever had a latte. I think it's, it sounds like it's a drink for you. Right? Maybe. It sounds really I like, good. I like in the wasn't. summer. I like a nice. They're not. They're not big iced coffee people in Montana. I don't. I don't know. But they do have a lot of espresso. It's huts. the lack of fridges. It's the lack of fridges, and uh, but I like to do like a. Uh, Ice latte with like a double or triple shot of espresso. Um, now, where do they get the ice from? Uh, the glaciers, typically. <laughs> oh, <okay. Yeah. laughs> they pick them off. Yeah. Gla- just glacier ice. Yeah. Someone probably does I, that, huh? Like, that's got to be a scam, like, somewhere. Like, <laughs> I'm sure it is somewhere, but, uh, I mean, there's... Probably somewhere near you. They probably advertise it as, get ice, get, you know, get real glacier get ice here. Well, it's uh, like, everything here is branded glacier, etc. but no one is saying, like, this... this Ice is from a glacier. <laughs> but Chris, I also learned something. Oh, go ahead. I was like, but everybody's thinking it. Yeah. But it's like the po- Poland Springs has water. We have water here that's like glacier or whatever. You know, and it's like, I don't think, I don't think twice about Montana the name. Montana Springs. Yeah. Everything here has got glacier in the name. So, you know. Um, Chris, I learned this weekend from Obert that they do not have boulders in Montana. Like you know how like we have like big giant rocks that are in Connecticut that like, pop out of the ground. You have in South Car- or you have in North Carolina too, where you know there's just big rocks, right? Like you know that you can climb I mean, on and like jump off and yeah. Apparently that doesn't exist in Montana. We have way fewer boulders out here 
because they're like the boulders come from mountains that are crumbling down. All our mountains are too new to be crumbling around, like the Appalachians, oh. the old mountains with all the old mountains, all those I boulders. Con- <laughs> I've conquered many, many a mountain in my day. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. I assumed it had something to do with like glaciers running down the landscape a billion years ago or something. But that yeah, that's just... how all those boulders were formed. You are correct. Um, but that's we don't we don't have them here. That's interesting. I was very that shocked. Is, that is a fun fact. Yeah. This is all we're do- This is a hashtag learning podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, I'm rebranding us to educational. Um, yeah, <laughs> Apple Podcast. We're gonna shoot uh, at those charts. Yeah. That, that's cool though. That's that is a that is a fun fact. I like that. Um, is this on Untapped? Do I get to take a take a run at being man of the people? Oh, you know what? I'm, I don't think I don't. I didn't even look. Yeah. Um. Let's find out. I assume not. I assume not. I didn't even look it either. Um, I, I didn't look better. No, I'm just. Yeah, it's a uh, prima barista hard latte. Did you tell Mama the Pod? Oh, thanks, a latte. I like that joke. That's good. Do you know what? So we have something for that. Yep. I totally made it up. Didn't get it from a TV Yay! show that aired 20 yeah. years ago. Uh, <laughs> I cannot find it. I don't know if you were able to. No, I, I can't. I can't find it either. So. I, I assume it's not on Untapped, but I was surprised that I, I guess I never really thought of putting vodka in coffee, but like I think just today Dana was talking about it, and I was like, I, I've i not heard this phenomenon. I know there's the liqueur, the cra- coffee liqueurs and stuff like that, and like creamers and all that, but like, and I don't whiskey know. I guess I just and didn't think about schnapps. it. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. That's weird. I don't know. What one more interesting thing before we move on. It, on the back of the can, you know how, or the back of the glass, you know how it says like where you can recycle it and get your 5 cents back? No, we don't we don't do that here. Yeah, well, no, we don't like, do you, that. But you know how like on the back of the cans it says, you know, redeemable for 5 cents at like these states? Mm. Yeah. And like Connecticut's always one of them. Yeah. Conveniently not on this bottle. Uh-oh. This bottle is not worth 5 cents in this state. Better call the bottle deposit police on them. <laughs> you hey. get 15 cents though in maine and vermont for for this oh you gotta drive wow. across those state lines save them all up and triple your money boom pro tip <laughs> do you think you know what i bet you the state of connecticut brings them back to vermont and gets those 15 cents <laughs> they're like we're, we we know what we're doing here yeah oh, this, yeah, this we was our business it, yeah. idea the oh, state of yeah. connecticut copied us after like a year ago when we came up with, with obert sending me all his empty so i make all the money here that is true we have talked about this in the podcast that means it's over all right bye folks yep we're done we're done <laughs> we're just running in circles now <laughs> all right i'm gonna hand this you know this shindig off to who wants to go next or whoever wants I'm, to go i'm next. ready i uh i'm excited about the one i have on this this show today because it's a beer that i uh had never seen before i was in i was in marcus foods and they had an empty spot where it belonged last time i was there and i was like oh man that'd be a great beer to bring on the show uh i heard good things about it online uh and but now it's they had it back today Mm -hmm. i was able to pick it up and it's from uh same brewery we had a couple weeks ago oma gang and their neon neon rainbows which is a hazy Ooh, double IPA. Ooh, interesting. Yeah, they have Neon That's, Rainbows, that is interesting. which is their original hazy, and a, and this Neon Neon Rainbows, which I've heard online, I think on Reddit or something, that it's like very highly regarded as a really good New England style. So, well, it, it's a New York based beer, so it's going to be it's going to be at least halfway decent for you. It's close to New England. Yeah, New England ish. New England ish, and you know we have <laughs> high standards for New England IPAs on this show. I think more than most. It's fair to say. Um, we're probably some of the biggest IPA snobs around. On the nose, it reminds me a lot of some Stubborn Beauty beers that I've had. They're uh, Nummy Nummy. What's the other IPA? Happy Trees? Mm. The uh, Fist. The Fist. Uh, arguably their best beer. I don't remember At least... The Fist. Is the, uh, they I don't think one? it's arguably. I don't. I don't know if they've come out with anything. Anything else? A lot of people like Happy Trees. That's the one. Uh, Stubborn Beauty. You. You get me every time. I love hanging out there. I love the beer, but it's all the same all the time. Yeah, they never have new beers. Never. Ever. Anyways. <laughs> so anyway, it reminds me of that low smell. <laughs> um, we'll see if the taste lives up to the the hype here. Yeah, this is good. Um. It's a good double IPA. You know, we talked on the on the pod before. I like the OG 
single IPAs more than the doubles, but this one's really good. I don't know if it's like the best ever. Um, it might be some of the best New England IPAs that I can find around here, other than probably Imagination, which is obviously a lot more local. But um, for nationally distributed, this is this is really good, really up there. It looks it looks a little dark. I mean, I can't. It's like it darker. It's, it's it's not de- like bright orange. Yeah, it's definitely yeah much more of that um, darker. I don't want to say thicker, unfiltered, but it's definitely got that more cloudy brown color than like an orange um and i'm trying to get you know tud tud's our fruit expert on the podcast <laughs> when it comes to fruit spurt. he's our fruit spurt when it comes to reviewing new england ipas this i definitely get some of those more orangey flavors like uh i don't know tangerine clementine kind of uh in the citrus category something a little right. bit sweeter too maybe tropical um pineapple would be a good guess yeah, yeah, it's just a very solid New England style double IPA. Um, nice. Not from New England, but close enough. Cooperstown, just like a hundred miles away from New England, probably. <laughs> <laughs> it's right there. Isn't that like? Isn't it like Cooperstown, like in the middle of New York? Okay, two hundred miles. I don't know. It's. I'm not. It's, yeah, it's probably like like six hours away, right? Like from me. From you, but from New England, you know, you guys got all those I mean, small states that's... out there. I don't know. How far can it be? It's only like five <laughs> hours. So it's only like five hours away instead of six. <laughs> well, from the Connecticut. The itty, itty bitty state you know? committee over yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, uh, uh, but I like this a lot. I bought a four pack, excited to have the other three. And I will be going back and getting their original Neon Rainbows to compare it uh, because the double is good, but it makes me want to try the original. Um, you know, it's, mm. no, it's no treehouse, it's no alchemist um it's no uh what's the other one that we like in boston trillium it's no trillium trillium but yeah like i was saying other than like imagination it's probably the best new england style i can get around here so i'll take it i'll get it again for sure um mark this one down as a 4.0 for me boys and uh, okay i think i think the untapped diverse is gonna like this one i think the untapped diverse is they're not at four two five cat territory, but we're we're approaching it. I think this is going to be like a four point one eight. So out of three thousand five hundred and seventy four check ins, it is a three point nine five. Hmm, okay, not a lot of check ins. No. Yeah, I was having a hard time finding it. I don't know. I okay. Neon I'm glad found it. Neon <laughs> like, neon rainbows, right? Yeah. yeah. Neon neon. I think yeah. I put double neon rainbows. Right. That explains I, a lot. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, All right. I understand now. Okay, right, so coming good. in under a four, which I'm, you know, I'm surprised by because I, the I read some hype online that maybe I got too hyped up on, but uh, and like I said, the fact that they were sold out the first time I went there and I saw it led me to believe mm. even more in the hype. Um, but I should have trusted up my on Mountain Dew. <laughs> should, we got caught up in the hashtag hop hype. I should have trusted my tongue and not the my eyes and and internet, but <laughs> um, with that. Chris, what do you got for us this week? So this is going along with the theme of hop hype and going around in circles because this beer is a throwback. And I mean, we talk about this this brewery a ton, so shouldn't be any surprise. Mm, keeping us on the edge of our seats here. What do you think it could be? It'd be? Funny if he had no idea what he was pulling out of the fridge when he no, said I know. <laughs> as soon as I, I was like, I was saving this beer because my uh, we have friends bring it to us, and. Um, I'd never had this beer before. These are the ones that they, they, you traded your baby for, this beer? The, yeah, yeah. Yes. These are the traded baby form. Um, I've not had this beer, but it's from a brewery that I love. Uh, this is Pora from Fox Farm Brewing. Ooh. So. I'm excited for you. Yeah, I've not. Let me see. How old is this can? They don't. It's, 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 it's not, not that old. Not stamped. It's, okay. not, it's not that old. I had it on tap at J. Tim's less than three weeks ago. So yeah, I was I was excited and I was like as like I was like I'm gonna save this one for the podcast. I haven't had Fox Farm in a in a, in a while, and uh, it is an IPA, oh. and it's a uh, Rawaka IPA. I assume Rawaka is a type of hop, just based on either that or some kind of weird. It, type it of, is a hop. Now it is a hop. We were talking about you know, and so on one end of the scale we have Stubborn Beauty who 
has perfected their IPAs and is like, we're done. We're not changing up any recipes. Yeah. And now yeah. we're, we're not on, trying anything new. On the other end, here we have Fox Farm, which makes some great IPAs. Part of me is like, you know, you don't have to make new ones. You can just keep making your same IPAs and I'll keep drinking <laughs> them. Yeah, why are you why do you consider doing this? Why right. are you doing this? Why why risk messing up a great thing? But right. I don't know. They have confidence in their ability to create fantastic IPAs. Right, right. Yeah, no, I mean they obviously they make amazing IPAs and like this Rawaka hop, I'm like very let me see. Hold on. I think it's from New Zealand. It is. It is from New Zealand. Maybe we'll do like a very, let me see, if, as long as I can find something that doesn't suck. I can't. Not real fast, I can't. A lot of people are into Rewaka right now. Well, while you're transitioning. Titties, titties, titties beer. Just the thing to get you grinning ear to ear. Whether you're from the country or the big old city. One thing for sure, everybody loves titties. Yep. That is cl- very clearly about beer. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's the name of the beer. So, anywho, uh, this Rewaka Hop uh, IPA named Pora from Fox Farm uh, poured kind of uh, maybe it's a little darker than normal. I think it's like a dark IPA kind of kind of kind of day. Uh, look at that! It's Tud's Tud's wedding glass. Um, <laughs> it is my wedding glass. It's a beautiful colored beer too. It is. It's a very nice colored beer. Um, nice frothy. The head is is not super super thick, but it is it is still there. It hasn't dissipated, so that's always a good thing. I get a very fruity smell. I get some some citrusy smells out of this, so I'm very curious um, as to something sweet, something sweet and good to eat. Um, so I'm curious as to what comes through on the taste, the taste smell. Uh, so let's let's give it a shot. A lot of kiwis. So while you're doing that, um, the Rewaka hop was released in 1997, um, and it is named after a town in New Zealand. Um, it's mostly known for its strong citrus character and high oil content. Um, but it is not. It was not founded in Rewaka, New Zealand, unfortunately. So I, I don't actually know why they named it after the town. But hmm. I mean, it's a good name. Maybe that's just where they had a the hop farm that grew the most of it. Maybe it's it's, it's a triple. It was brewed during the country's sponsored program of hops with a difference, where the country was trying to grow different styles of hops. So we ended up with like Rewaka and uh, Nelson Savine and Moteca, all part of the same program. Interesting. Very okay. cool. And I think we've talked about Nelson before, and. I think we've talked about all those on the podcast before. Yeah, I think so. So this beer is very, very good, but it's not what I expected. Um, I definitely don't. I mean, I get some citrus. There's definitely. I don't know. It packs a very hard punch. Like it's very, very strong um, right up front. And I'm trying to decipher. I do get some citrus, but I do get like a nice earthy, like almost earthy balance to it. Like it's not all citrus. It's not all citrus. And it's actually got, I don't know what the IBU of the beers are, but I feel like it's a bit bitter. So I feel like it's getting up there. Uh, It's good. Very good. Uh, Yeah, it definitely, I mean, maybe like a, maybe like a pineapple or something. Something's in there. (laughs) There's something in there. Um, But I do get some earthy tones underneath that. Um, uh, Nice. It it gives you a good punch. A lot of flavor. Not what I expected. I slid right down my throat. That must have been the oiliness that we were talking about. (laughs) Well um, lubricated beer. <laughs> well lubricated because <laughs> the oils from the Rewaka hops. Uh, but it's a very, it's a, no, I mean, it's another um, awesome beer from from Fox Farm. I mean, they just, they just, they just do good stuff. We talk about them enough. <laughs> they should sponsor us. Oh boy. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's very good. Uh, if you are, if you're, I think if you're a bitter, if you like bitter beers, or if you if you're turned off by bitter beers, I would either try nor or not try, depending. Um, only because it, I get a I get a decent punch at the beginning, um, and that kind of tails off towards towards the end of the beer. It's nothing too 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 crazy. So, um, yeah. So thank you, Sarah and Evan, for this. This was really really awesome. Uh, of course, whatever I get. Fox Farm, I'm excited, and especially new Fox Farm. I have an Ashlawn coffee stout in the fridge, too, which I'm also very excited so about. So good. I haven't had one in... It's been years. Uh, maybe two years. I don't think... Go. Oh, yeah, because I didn't have any when I when I came up this past year. So I think it's been about two years. Um, so, <laughs> so, so I'm exci- I got that. So I'm excited. So for those of you who don't know Fox Farm, all of their 
uh, cans have very similar uh, design, but just like they're all white and then like a different shade of color. And I feel like Chris is like that scene in The Wizard of Oz where he's like, I've never seen a can of this color before. <laughs> and then he throws the whole parade celebrating his new ruby slippers. <laughs> no, that's, I mean, you're not far off, obviously. We all know this. I, this, I'm not, I know it's not just me. This is the, the podcast affinity, but uh, I used to live 10 minutes from the brewery, so it was amazing. It was so good. And yet you moved. And yet you yeah, moved. Yeah, well, I don't know. Well, then he nah, it's, it's moved fine. 10 minutes away from, uh, where were you? What was that good Nashville brewery? Not Southern Grist, the other one. Southern Grist or Bearded Iris? Bearded Iris, yeah. Then you moved to, to be like, you know, half an hour from Bearded Iris ish. Maybe a little longer, but. Okay. I, I am jealous. That I, I really liked that beer. It's very good. It's very good. Uh, it's, not my fa- it's not my favorite from them. I mean, that's. It's a tall order. There's so many. There's yeah. so many, but it is something different. I mean, it doesn't. It's not like your typical IPA that you get from every every place you know so um that being said i'm gonna give it i'm gonna give it a i'm gonna give it a, a, a very solid four like a solid four um flirting with four and a quarter uh i really enjoy it i think the hop hype around it is going to be pretty insane especially since it's new and it's fox farm um so i'm gonna say on um, the untapped verse is going to say it is a 4.23 4.23 Play the music. Um, you are very close. Damn. Ugh. It is a 4.27. Dan, I almost said 4.26, which I still would have been off. But, <laughs> but you would have been that much closer. Uh, I would have been a little bit closer. 1,226 <laughs> check-ins. Um, oh, that's a lot more than I thought. Okay. Yeah, I know. It's like the same one that I have in my beer from halfway across the country, basically. Like, what, 3,000 <laughs> check-ins? Yeah. And that was um, the Pora, right? That was the name of the beer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So hey, there you go. That's hey. Listen, I left the door open, Obert. You can you can do it. You can be man of the people. No, I already went. I already reviewed my beer. Oh fuck me! How did I <laughs> how did I miss this entire thing? Did I win then? Yeah, you did I win. Did it. You did win. I was saving the Sorry, I was saving I'm saving the honks for uh, the end when Golly, we get to How did I I like blacked out during like this? A whole review segment. <laughs> there's a, there's a, uh, a lot to think about when you're podcasting. You know, you got to. That's keep... what happens when you take a nap like an hour before podcasting. It's not good, y'all. Don't yeah. do it. Like, it's a PSA. Um, I do have a quick update on my beer, though. As it warms up, I'm really enjoying this even more. Um, I IPAs normally, they're better kind of a little on the colder side. But this is this is getting really good and complex as it warms up. So Interesting. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm enjoying yeah, it's it. it's it's actually weird. Like I was I was just thinking of that about this beer too. I was like, I am wondering once it gets a little because I it, straight from fridge to glass. Like I am wondering like if it, I give it another ten minutes or so, if it's gonna like have more more complex flavoring. But I don't know. I mean, I'm no Pete, no Tom, no Bill, no nor Jose. Yeah, it was. Uh, <laughs> I wasn't those guys. But uh, yeah, that's uh, very cool. Very cool. Um, so that ten nine. Eight, eight, seven, seven six, six, five, five four, four, three, three two, two, one. You all know what that means. It's time for we the... All, everybody knows what it means, including everybody on this podcast. The countdown <laughs> with Tud. It's the countdown with Tud. I was so confused. <laughs> we were so confused when we talked before the episode started about re- returning to the segment called The Countdown when we started counting down. <laughs> we started counting down and then you were We did not get to the point where we were where we talked about we were going to count down into the countdown. Well, this you you got to add okay, you got to add That's true. Gotta... Very true. However, Chris said 10 and I was confused and then by 9 I had figured it out. Like <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe we don't have to do 10 every time maybe we do five but i don't know we or or we go up 20 next time it's not the count up no. oh you mean count down from 20 okay yeah yeah let's start at 11 next time so um, in a couple in a couple episodes we, 50 49 i think todd can get us a good a good NASA sound drop for that one, I think. Oh yeah, that's a good, that's a good call out. Good yeah. call out. Yeah. Um, but before that, before next week's NASA sound drop, 
Remind us what we're counting down again, Ted. So we are counting down the list of the 25 most important IPAs right now as ranked by vinepair.com. Okay. Um, we've already done th- we've already done 25 through 21. So starting at number 20 this week, we're going with um Triple Crossing Falcon by S- Smash out of Richmond, Virginia. Never heard of it. Next. Nope, sorry. No. It is Triple <laughs> Triple Crossing is the I forgot how this how this is uh set up. Triple Crossing is the brewery. The um the IPA is called Falcon Smash. It is a seven percent ABV IPA out of uh Richmond, Virginia, and it is their flagship IPA that reinvents itself. Um that's because it's a reinvention built into the brand. The Virginia based New England IPA is an ode to Falconer's Flight, a proprietary hop blend that includes Cascade, uh Centennial, Chinook, Citra, Cluster, Columbus, and Crystal hops, aka all the sea hops. Those are my favorite hops. Um, I love the sea hops. I've said that before mm-hmm. on the pod. Anytime I see those, I'm, I'm all about them. Columbus, I could take it or leave it, but the rest, I'm a huge fan of. And apparently, it says, along with rotating varieties of Hop Union's experimental tool shed, Triple Crossing's reputation for hop-driven experimentation gets stronger every year. So I, I, I believe, based on how I read this, they, they brew this with those hops, and then they add in other hops every single time they brew it. Weird. Hmm. That's got to be a powerful beer. Well, I thought you were going to say, I believe Chris needs to send us each some because he's the closest. So Yes, yeah, so I think he does have to go to Virginia or Richmond, Virginia and get some. I'll have to keep an eye out for it. I mean, it's not outside the realm of possibility it shows up in a shop somewhere. That's what they like. I have no idea how far you are from Richmond, Virginia. Are you close? Are you far? Where? Yeah, I'm like an hour and a half. From Richmond? I think you need to drive there. I believe so. Oh, damn. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I think I'm I th- I'm not like North Carolina is long, but very skinny. I know. So. Again, we got the itty bitty state committee over here. No, no, no. I'm the medium state. <laughs> My state is completely average. <laughs> oh, um, I can do it on my phone. I'm trying to do it on the you, computer. I can look up how far I'm You could do it on your on phone. My phone. All right, no, I'm 4 hours away. Never mind. <laughs> Still drivable. But Still drivable. Maybe they distribute but- it. It's very possible that that's 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 what I'm hoping for. Okay, well we failed at this countdown. We're like at just the count now. We're like we gotta we gotta keep this countdown rolling here. Yeah. So number nineteen on the list is a beer I think we've all had. I know it's distributed to Connecticut now. Um, it's High Lie by Cigar City. Oh yeah. Yep. First I've time had that I had this, I was in Florida, and they've since yet yeah, turned it to be a nationally distributed beer. Solid important yeah, and it's probably I, I don't know i guess it probably has some kind of i think it has some kind of significance as like one of the first like southeastern ipas or something like that it sounds good to me it's probably florida's best first best beer the most mm. important beer out of florida we could say that right so it says that it was in 2018 cigar the high High Lie was the top-selling six-pack of canned craft beers at major grocery stores across the entire United States. Wow, um, that's impressive. That's that's really interesting. It's also part of the. Uh, I didn't realize that High Lie or Cigar City was bought by Canarchy Craft Beers or Brewers Collective, which is the same company that owns Oscar Blues. We've talked about them before um, in the pod, I think. Canarchy, yeah, yeah. Um, so th- yeah, they basically they're based they're. Its biggest claim to fame here is that it's widely distributed and it's a solid beer that Vine Pear really likes. I gotta tell you, I've had it in Connecticut. It's not as good as it was when I bought it in Florida. Yeah, it just like when it was still Cigar City. It doesn't have the same. If you're not breathing in that swamp air, it's not as good. <laughs> yeah, that, and I just think that the the way they brew it has changed. I mean, now they're brewing it for mass distribution, whereas before, when you got it in Florida from Cigar City, like you know, Cigar City was just in that state. There was more love. It was made with more TLC. Fair enough. Number 18 on the on the countdown is Dogfish Head 60 Minute IPA. I believe we've all, right, all, we've all had, had it. We've all had this. Um the the caption I think was kind of interesting. It's undisputable that t- 2020 has been an off-centered year, but one thing that has uh, consistently kept us centered was 60 Minute IPA. With its continually hot balance of citrus and herbal flavors, strong malt backbone, and relatively sessionable 6% ABV, 60 Minute is still impressing us. Call it COVID-induced grocery store stocking up and taste buds getting nostalgic, or the fact that our moms kept a sixer of it in the fridge all summer, but we definitely drank a lot of 60 Minutes this year. I I found that interesting. 
Yeah, if I was going to pick one of the uh, Dogfish Minute series to put on this list, it would not have been the 60 Minute, you know? Mm. I also wouldn't call it sessionable at 6%, 6%. ABV. It's a bit yeah, of a stretch. That's not... It's a bit of a stretch. It's a, it's a very short... It's a, it's a short session. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, no, I don't know. I mean, it's it's... I don't I enjoy the 60 minute series. I enjoy Dogfish Head like so I mean it's it's fine. It's not my favorite. Like <laughs> yeah. Um I've I've been to the brewery. Awesome place. Awesome tour. Um you know in the era of lack of beer tours, uh it's one I can highly recommend if you're ever going down the Delaware Peninsula, you're going to Dover, to watch a race. Um <laughs> stop by Dogfish Head cuz it's it's a cool spot. Nice. Yeah. So coming in at number 17 is Firestone Walker's Double Jack um, oh, from, okay. out of Paso Robles, California. This, it's a 9.5% ABV IPA that apparently was missing for a few years and is coming back. It came back in January of 2021. Yeah, I don't know the Double Jack if I've had that one before. Cause what's... I think we've had it on the podcast. I don't know if you've had it. On, I think I had it on the podcast. Yeah, there's something else Jack is like, you know, obviously their non-double version I've had. What is it, Easy well, Jack? I, I is just that what did it's called? There. there is an Easy Jack. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I have the Easy Jack. It's good. And Chris, you just had, what was the The, the Fly one? Jack. The Fly which Jack, is the, okay. Which is the, like, the Session 96 Cal hashtag Tudfit beer. And you thought it was delicious. I thought it was pretty good. For a session, I thought it was pretty good. Untapped, not as not as kind as I was. But, I mean, solid solid beer. Interesting. So I'll, I'll I mean, keep my eye out for this Double Jack. Yeah, go find it, people. Um... And somebody bring it on the podcast. Got to complete so, the jack. On the the, jack um, the final beer on today's countdown is one that we've talked about on this podcast a ton. Obert has some pretty strong opinions on it. And Chris and I don't because neither of us have ever had it. Budweiser uh, it's No. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, I've it's, had um, that. Does anybody want to take a guess of what it is? It's, it's, it's Pliny, Pliny the Elder. It is indeed. Pliny the Elder by Russian River. Nice. Um, Got Obert it. being the only one who's ever had it, he has spoken nothing but awful things about it and hates the brewery. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't know if I would go that far. I just think it's fine. It's okay. It's an I, IPA. It's, and, and Jenna has Jenna has uh, also said that about it. She's like, it's okay. Well, it's not... the, the other reason I say it is because Tud is like, this is like on Tud's bucket list. Like, if, Oh, yeah. If, I'm, I'm going to find if it. If Tud... One. Got hit by a truck tomorrow, and he was laying out on the pavement, bleeding out. His final thought would be, "Never did get to try that Pliny." <laughs> like, that would be that would be how he would end his life. But I, I, I've been trying to caution you. It's a good IPA. This I think this neon neon rainbows is better, but that's because I like hazy double IPAs more than I like West Coast style IPAs. I don't know. Right. I mean, it's on my it's on my list of beers that I need to drink too. Like, I mean, I mean, I don't know if I'm as fervently hunting for it as Tut is, but uh, like, I I do I do want to I do want to try it as well. There's a couple of them, Snake Venom. If anybody any of our international listeners want to send me a bottle, that'd be awesome. Wait, what's Snake Venom? It's it's yeah, sixty seven. It's sixty seven point five percent alcohol. Oh, is it's, that the current world record holder for the strongest I th- beer? I think it's been beaten, but I don't remember. I, I'd have to I'd have to look it up. It used to be for a long time. Um sixty seven point five percent alcohol. <laughs> um but yeah, so so I mean but but Pliny is on there. So I if anybody wants to send me a, two bottles of Pliny and trust in which one, case I'll send him one to Tud, then one we elder do that. and one younger. Yep. Yeah. Send me four bottles, two two Pliny, two Elder, two Younger, now, and then just trust trust in me that I will send them to Tud. Now, why wouldn't they just send us each one of them? Why would they save, have to go save through shipping. you as proxy? Listen, you want them to pay costs. two shipping costs? Come on it. now. Tud, I mean, see, I'll look, pay them for, I'll pay them for the shipping the people. <laughs> I'll, pay, I'll pay them for the shipping costs. Don't, don't send them to Chris. I'll never get it. <laughs> kind of no, like that you, time that Ober and I bought beer with Chris, and Chris was supposed to ship it to us, and it took months. <laughs> I don't know, it was it was weeks. It was definitely weeks. It might have been two it months. Got to, so technically, it got to the point where Obert was was texting you pictures of baby elephants every day as a motivation and a reminder for you to go to the store to ship it to us. It's it's a lot of work though. If you think about it, if you think about it, oh. think about all the work it was. I know. Well, it's funny we're, I, we're talking about this because you know when I was back home, I'm like, you know, I'm gonna be set on beer for a while, uh, and because I picked up all my stuff driving east across this beautiful country i had a bunch of connecticut beer 
And tell you what, those months in Connecticut, I drank a lot of really good beer. And now I'm back here and I'm like, wish I had got more beer. <laughs> I wish I had. <laughs> Are I you wish out I of had, beer? Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, I've, I have did a purd recently. I have right now in my fridge, I think I have six Guinness <laughs> from my stew. I have three neon neon rainbows and like maybe five other beers. Uh, you said you did a purge. Does that mean you threw some away? Uh, like a stunt, like I drank, I drank the, I drank, I tried to drink everything down before I left back to go to Connecticut. So, and I didn't bring any, I didn't stop anywhere on my drive back West. I just went through and was like, I've been drinking great beer for three months. The last thing I want to think about right now, but now I'm like, you know, I could go for some non Montana beer right about now. Mm. It's, did you have to do the purge because your fridge died? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just knew I was going to be gone for a while and I wanted to come back to a clean fridge. You know, there's nothing better yeah, than coming sense. back to a clean fridge. I can think of better things. Nothing better. Nothing Maybe better. One, one better thing is clean sheets. That's mm. one thing. Uh, pro tip mini nano handle for people. You going on vacation? Wash the sheets. Like a day or two before you leave or like put on fresh sheets before you leave. You're going to be so happy when you get home. You get in from that late red eye flight, not red eye. You get in that late flight and you just want to pass out in your bed. You're going to be so happy that you have nice clean sheets to, to just jump into. There are very few things um, that are better than a, 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 a freshly remade bed. Yeah. Um, but speaking of nano handles, I think it's time that we take our frosty mug out of the freezer where we fill it with life advice, products we love, um, stuff we like, stuff we just want to spend time shouting out. Um, And as always, we kick off the segment with this very special song. Test your handle. Test your handle. Test. Mug of wisdom. Drink. Mug of wisdom. All right. Thank you, Jordan, as always, from Wreck My Podcast for making us that song. And uh, Chris, you are today's honk. Honk, 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 man, honk, of honk, honk, the honk, honk, people, <laughs> um, with a pretty good guess. Extending guests. my lead. Extending Very your nice. lead. Um, c- congratulations on your second victory. Now it's like 412 to two to, I think, one for Obert. Extending, Listen. extending my lead. I think I got to get a whiteboard and I got to put it right on this wall. <laughs> I'll put a whiteboard right here and I'll write down who has however many and we'll start a count. How does that sound? Sound good? I think we need it. I expect that by next Monday. Okay. All right. Let's see if Amazon can come through in time. Uh, actually, I don't have Prime right now. So maybe I'll just want to get one. One of us has to send one to him. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll Venmo you. You send me a whiteboard and I'll hang it up right there. How does that sound? Okay. Perfect. That'll, that'll be fine. Okay. Um, so Chris, as man of the people, you get to pick the order of the handles this week. Uh, I'm going to let Obert go first. Okay. Um, I got a couple of good ones here. Here, I'm going to go with a specific handle, uh, that might only help a few people, but hopefully it helps at least someone listening to this. Do you live in a place where it gets cold and snowy? And do you also have a dog that likes to go on walks where it's cold and snowy? If I so, live in neither places, nor do I have a dog. If so, this handle might be for you. Um, I went out cross-country skiing today with popcorn. Uh, she loves it. She loves to run around and try and find hibernating animals while I ski around. And uh, one problem, though, especially when it's that wet, sticky snow, is it gets all stuck in her paws. Mm. And uh, it's really uncomfortable. Her paws started bleeding today. But uh, they sell products to help for dogs that have this problem and the most popular the best one is called musher's secret so after our cross-country ski i stopped at my local pet store you can go to musher's secret website and find if where it's available by you it's just a wax that you can go and put on your dog's paws so if they're out in the snow running around having fun 
they won't get that issue, that painful balling of ice mm. and snow in their paws, which can be uncomfortable. And it helps with reducing cracking as well. And I also saw, like, it's recommended for horses. They had, like, a, like you could put on your horse's hooves as well. Uh, so if you're someone who you notice your dog stopping on your walks to lick or bite at their paws a lot when it's snowy, I recommend checking out Musher's Secret. I used it when we went to the dog park this afternoon, and it was a huge improvement from our cross-country ski. She seemed to be a lot more comfortable, a lot happier. So um, check it out. Musher's Secret, everybody. It's a secret no longer to you. Oh, no. You told <laughs> the told secret. I told the secret wow. to the world. Oh, yeah. Lord. All of those. You know, if that company doesn't start sponsoring us for that drop, that, that I know. should be something that they need to do. I know. <laughs> All of those dog mushers are going to be mad at me for ruining their secret, getting <laughs> the word out there. You know? Dang. Yeah. That's, that's, that's good. At least popcorn has a little bit more comfort. That's right. Yeah. And... I know. It's funny because her paws are cracked. My hands are cracked. It's It's been a cold, dry winter here. I got to start moisturizing my own hands. <laughs> yeah. Obert's secret. I know. I need some of that Obert's secret. And it's funny because Jordan, <laughs> Jordan was just on a couple weeks ago with his own moisturizing handle. Mm, uh, I that's sh- true. I got to look into that Duke Cannon stuff he promoted. But you know, uh, he, I think he has a dog, too. He may need this stuff after what's happening in Texas currently. Oh, I know. With all the cold weather. Yeah. And the rolling blackouts. Jeez, this whole, yeah. Weather, 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 weather is different in different places. Update, it's cold in Texas when we recorded this podcast. It's Right. Yeah, yes. it's cold everywhere. So I don't think weather's different in, every, in different places anymore. I think it's weather is weather. Weather is cold in the past. <laughs> it's, glo- it's global warming. Yeah. Thanks, Obama. Uh, so, Chris, is, who's going next? Are you, are you going to take it or are you going to have me hand it off to Tud here? Oh, I'm going to hand it off to Tud. <laughs> okay, Tud, here you go. Take this frosty mug full of wax. Perfect. So, um, my handle this week is something uh, that I recently bought from Amazon. And I, eh, eh, it's particular to Amazon. So, you have to have you have to buy it from Amazon. And that is Echo Glasses. Um, so, that's, that's when you, know, you put the Alexa on your face. And then you can, you know, wearing glasses that have your prescription Ayo. in them, you can uh, then also have, you know, the Alexa on you everywhere you go. Um, it like also Valentine's has speakers Day. that are... What? You put Alexa on Alexa's your face. on your face. Oh, it's like a sex gotcha. thing. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> uh, okay, continue with your, your, sex, your sex glasses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Oh, um, no, so they so I recently bought some um my I found out that my insurance will pay uh half of them and based on how expensive they are, which they were two twenty five when I bought them, um so it, they're basically the same they they work out to be about the same price of what a normal pair of frames would cost me under my insurance. Oh, so this is like so for I like thought, people with regular prescription glasses. This is like Yeah. Oh Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. You can you can buy them and then um just bring them to any place that you get your your eyeglasses done up at, and they'll be able to put prescription or prescription lenses in the frames. And so that way, when you're walking around wearing glasses, you know you also always have your your handy dandy uh, smart AI personal, sitting right on your face. Personal AI assistant sitting on your face. Correct. Um, uh, and then they also have they also have speakers, so you can listen to like podcasts or anything that you would listen to through headphones, and you don't have to actually plug your ears up with uh, headphones. Either. Wow, I had no idea you were living so far in the future ahead of me, Todd. Because this sounds, <laughs> I am, this sounds, I am like the future. Quite the futuristic invention here. So, is it like the Terminator, where it like could show things, project things on the glasses? N- no, I don't have a hood. Okay, okay. So it's not like the Google Smart Glass things. No, no. Okay. Unfortunately, not. Okay, okay. It is just a pair of glasses that on the side, one side's the battery. And the other side is like all like the electronics that control her speaking to you, and um, you know, and then there's speakers on each side that are pointed into your ears. Now, granted, they're not as good as the bone conducting headphones that I've talked about here on the past. People can actually hear what's going on on your glasses if they're close enough. Right. Um. But other than that, people can't really hear it as long as you're you know a few feet away. Um. Have you found them? What's like? The, have you found them useful? Have you used it at all yet? What's like? I have used it. Um, you know, they don't have my prescription in them yet, but you know, they come with just clear 
glass in them to start. And so I have used it. Um, it's They're very comfortable. Um, they're not really as bulky as you would think that having a pair of glasses that has all that technology built in should be. Um, it's They're really cool. Uh, they're they're cool enough for me to for them to be my handle. And if you are an Amazon subscriber or you have any interest in having a smart AI personal assistant on your face, uh, I recommend going out and, and picking these up for your next pair of uh, glasses frames. I think I told Chris about them over the weekend. He seems shocked because uh, he's looking them up currently now, right now. Oh, I think he's buying them as we speak. <laughs> and welcome to the club, no. Chris. No, no, no. I can't afford two hundred fifty dollars payments I, or uh, glasses when I get mine for well, free. So, like I said, uh, you should check with your insurance company to see what they'll cover. Your health insurance company they, or your your glasses wear or your glasses company should pick up some of that tab. Yeah, they might. It might. It might cover about half. But I can get glasses. I need new glasses. Actually, that's one thing I'm doing. New glasses. <laughs> see, and you always talk about I... how you'd like to, you'd like to wear your headphones at work. So, what's better than combining those two and saving yourself some? Angst. Uh, yeah, uh, I, mean, I mean, to Todd's point, you would spend that much money on some nice Bluetooth headphones. So correct, mm. yeah. and to be able to, know. if you if you can't actually wear headphones at work, they can't really tell you that you can't wear your glasses. I think Chris is I mean, reluctant. As long as they don't. Chris is reluctant to charge his glasses. I think is the issue. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, yeah, no. Unfortunately, I work with no one. Uh, all, everybody at work is named Alexa, so I cannot. Uh, I just can't. It, w- it would work. <laughs> be like Alexa, load that trailer, and she'd be like, "I can't do that." Be like, "Bitch, not you." <laughs> and then you get fired. <laughs> <laughs> and then I get fired. <laughs> so. So I can't like like sure it's it's a it's a small investment up front but a very long term divestment. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh man, they are cool. they are neat though, and they're they're way more stylish than I thought they were going to be. Yeah, they they look exactly like the glasses you're wearing now. I think they're a little skinnier, but they are they are stylish. So uh, and I need I need as big a frames as possible. I need Elton John glasses because my head's huge. So you gotta you gotta hide that face. <laughs> The more stuff that covers, that's why you got the beard, you got giant glasses, long yeah, hair, they, I mean. <laughs> that's right, that's right, I'm ugly, it's fine. Chris is just trying to hide as much face as possible? Yeah. <laughs> yep, yep, that's what it is. <laughs> <sighs> Alright Chris, so take this this frosty mug of wisdom and um, tell us what your handle is this week. So, my handle is not nearly as cool as yours. Um, so, mine is for people at home that are looking to clean stuff that's me you want stuff wait what that's me have you ever been at home i'm at home and i want to clean things (laughs) so dawn has come out with a power wash option it's like a spray bottle dawn it's kind of weird i know Dana, wait, wait, Dana's is been your handle ra- dishwashing soap? No, no, no. It's this, no, it's power it's this one particular soap. dishwashing soap. Uh, but it lights off people. I, go buy some. It actually does a very good job getting uh, things clean. So if you are interested in that, it's down. It's was it Dawn Power Wash? As I'm trying to read it from over here. Uh, it, it's very good at cleaning things. It's very. Good. And Dana, Dana loves it. I will say that she's a. Big so you fan. don't even Apparently use it. Your wife uses it. <laughs> well, no, I mean I've, I have used it, but it's not. I'm not as big a fan as she is. So okay, so you want to have a mediocre review of a cleaning product that soap. we've all your, heard of. Your review is of soap. Hey, listen, y'all. <laughs> You make, you make me do these things every week. This is what you get eventually. I just want to be, be clear here. that we're... What, do you want me to put over Pokemon again? <laughs> I can do that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Wow. So there you go. Clean your stuff. Do it. Okay. That's Dawn. That's T- Dawn Todd, Dawn's take it away. Son. Todd, just wrap okay. this shit up. It's such a good, such a good hand. I don't even want to hear it. <laughs> So, so with that, uh, thank you for listening. Uh, we'd like to provide. <laughs> oh, I Jesus! I, I honestly going into it. I didn't know I was going to sell it. So. We know. We know. <laughs> oh man. Oh, okay. Okay. Ooh. The cleaning product that Chris has never used is mediocre at best. I have used. I have cleaning used soap. 
I have used it. He's like, you know, maybe you should buy it. Maybe you shouldn't. It's all up to what your preference is. Do you want to use mediocre cleaning cleaning product? All right. I'm going to say I'm going to say it's 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 higher quality. (laughs) Anywho, Obert has decided he's done talking. Well, the the less I talk, the more quickly we can move on from that handle. (laughs) All right. Uh, We'd like to thank the breweries or the people who provided today's uh, drinks. I'm going to thank Prima Barista um, out of Mystic, Connecticut, by way of St. Genevieve, Missouri, for their um, vanilla-flavored hard latte. I would like to thank Fox Farm for their Pora Rewaka IPA. And I want to thank Oma Gang for their Neon Neon Rainbows. Uh, please make sure you head over to social media and follow us everywhere at DAWF Podcast. That's Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Untapped. Um, I think that's it. Uh, also, make sure you head over to Discord and uh, join us there. Uh, we've been trying to make that a little bit more active. Uh, we had a bunch of conversations last week where um, Obert found out some new books that he should be reading. Uh, so thank you for that from Jake um, or Mick Mouse as he is on the Discord. <laughs> Uh, make sure you hashtag follow the email at dawfpodcast at gmail.com. Also, if you have song suggestions that kind of sound like beers or beer beers that sound like songs, please send them over to beerdadgamer at gmail.com. Um, make sure you head over to iTunes and leave us a five-star rating and a review. Also, make sure you're telling your friends about us if they want you know good beer reviews, uh, good countdown reviews, uh, two awesome handles, and usually one mediocre handle or air. Um... Make sure you're doing that too, but yeah, definitely tell your friends, people. I mean, it's it's yeah, you know, this is not a secret podcast. This is not going to make you better at fantasy football. Maybe it would if you listen to my advice. But outside of that, um, it's just a fun podcast. Share it with people. Uh, other than that, um, my name's Dud. Thank you, guys, for listening. My name's Chris, and I'm Obert. And remember, if you're tricking alone, do it with friends. I still have no words about that handle, Obert. Uh, well, I do have to say I opened a second neon neon. I don't know, let me move it up to 4.25. I went right for the There, 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 there,